Can you build a real geothermal greenhouse in your own backyard? Can you afford it? Will it work for you? We all need a source of good clean nutrients and we need a source of good clean energy that doesn't need fossil fuels. We're heading into uncertain times and very strange weather. Perhaps a geothermal greenhouse can help us. And I looked into it and I watched all sorts of YouTube videos and I'm sorry guys who dug a one foot pipe down in the ground and called that geothermal energy. That's not geothermal. In fact, if you go three feet down, still not deep enough. Soil scientists tell me that the ground is between 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 55 degrees Fahrenheit from about eight feet down and below. And that works from the tropics all the way up towards the permafrost it's a pretty constant temperature. So if we can use that as energy in our greenhouse to stop things from freezing in the coldest weather or to cool down the greenhouse in the hottest weather, we'd really have something. But can we do it on a home scale and will it work? So I'm not talking here about the kind of geothermal energy that comes from heated water and hot springs and things like that. Most of us don't have hot springs in our backyard. And I'm not talking about the kind that relies on a pond or a lake because we may not have that available to us either. So this is ground geothermal that is developed by moving air through a series of pipes deep down in the ground and in fact in the gravel. And that gravel also allows warmth to seep up from underground or coolness all through the seasons. Others built what is really an earth battery storing summer heat to use in winter. That is good. I did that too, but the real geothermal story is different than that. In the summer, well actually really in the early spring of 2017, I began to build a greenhouse and a kind of test lab in our backyard. And I tried to do it without disturbing our vegetable garden. My plans demanded only basic skills that anyone can learn. I use tools you probably already have, like a power saw and a drill. I was a senior with a disability, a weak right arm. And during that process, it got so hot that lumber twisted, and then so cold that even a small leak felt like somebody left a window open. I did it. And I think you can too. But should you? Is it worth it? Does it really work? Those are questions I set out to answer. I got results in a long series of videos and I got both the solid advantages to a geothermal greenhouse and the limitations and I found out the cost. Where I made mistakes, I explained those and how to correct things. Greenhouses have interested me since the early 1980s when I built a small stone and glass greenhouse attached to our cabin near Canada's Algonquin Park. For a few weeks there, winter nighttime temperatures went to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, below zero, about the same in Celsius, and they warmed up to a frigid minus 20 Fahrenheit, or a minus 29 C for the daytime high. We only had eight hours of daylight with the weak sun low down in the sky. That got me thinking about a greenhouse designed for Canada, for Scandinavia, for all the northern U.S. states, of Colorado, Idaho, and, and Russia, anywhere that cold can come down, even northern China. More recently, in my new home in the west, heat has become the real predator on plants. Summer after summer of unusual dry heat would melt almost any greenhouse life. Could geothermal keep providing home food even during record heat waves? How cool could I make the greenhouse using this earth power? which stays cool all summer. Perhaps you've heard of the South American method called wallopini. Plants are grown in a trench and the beveled walls of earth are all the walls that you have. And then you have beams over the top and they put down plastic usually over that. It could be glass. And then you grow things. But that design, when you think about it, really only works in or near the tropics because the sun has to pass overhead and a lot of the plants are in shade for too much of the day. It's not going to work in the higher 
latitudes. But we do want to use Earth's heat, and especially with a floor placed below the frost line of the surrounding soil. Otherwise, the floor of the greenhouse is really a conveyor belt for your warm air out and the outside cold air in. So I designed a hybrid. The plants need to be around ground level, but your feet don't. My little backyard greenhouse is sunk three feet, and then the double pane glass windows rise another four feet. A safety glass roof goes overhead of that, and it, it employs a system of homemade beams to hold all the weight off the side glass, and then I have two by six rafters capable of holding eight feet of snow, and that's in case you go south or one winter you're not well enough to clear the snow off the roof and all that. I expect this building to last at least 50 years. That's the way I built it. In my series of videos, I begin with bare ground, and I take you through the underground excavation, the pipe design. I use common PVC drain pipes, and I explain in the videos why I made that choice and not others. We learn how to lay rebar in the footer, and how I built my first concrete block wall on my own. I built one before, but with a lot of help. And I had to do this one kind of with one hand. The block foundation is not pretty, but it works perfectly. You can do this. The carpentry is simple, done almost entirely with a skill saw, three saw blades, a cheap saw, a cheap Walmart hand drill, a power screwdriver, and a socket set. I had to rent one tool, a device to bend rebar for the concrete wall. It cost me 26 bucks for the day. Now, heavy machinery was involved. There was a pretty large bill for the excavator, one long day, a dump truck two runs uh, taking out the fill, five dump truck loads of drainage gravel, and a backhoe to return the soil around the concrete foundation once that was done and put together our backyard again. Heavy machinery was definitely involved and that has a carbon cost, but I'm hoping the free geothermal energy after that will make it all worthwhile. You may watch my new course and decide geothermal is really not for you. Well, good, you just saved maybe $8,000. Or you may see a dozen ideas that you can use in your own design. I'm sure you can find ways to do some things better or cheaper. Uh, you may want a geo greenhouse just like this one for your backyard, though, and I show you exactly how to do it. Changing from open windows on perfect summer days to an insulated shed in the coldest winter nights. I found multiple uses for this unique building. Of course, we grow food in it. One cold January, we picked peas out of the greenhouse. For 10 months, we grew a crop of medicinal herbs one time. And last year, the little greenhouse also became a drawing room for a few weeks. It worked great. I keep a lawn chair out there to drink tea in a summery atmosphere with plants all around me any time of year. It is a place. Before you start dreaming and planning, I have to ask you some serious questions. What is your best case outcome? Can you invest several thousand dollars in this project? Don't borrow any money to build one. With the added interest, it won't make financial sense. A greenhouse does need care throughout the growing season, or at least you have to look in on it. And are you a person who can keep a project running for several years after it's built? Maybe could you make money building one of these for other people? Do you enjoy growing plants? Think about all that. Included with the video course are my pages of notes with links to YouTube videos, suppliers, and costs, and all that. While I provide images of my rough plans, professional grade plans are not included, and they're not necessary. If you plan to save money on vegetables with a geothermal greenhouse compared to buying them at a supermarket at recent prices, that will take a long time, possibly up to 10 years, depending on your growing skills and your luck. But you will get healthier food. You know where it comes from. And we know fresh veggies brought in from the greenhouse can have levels of vitamins and minerals you just can't buy from a long-haul agribusiness food Plus, there may be circumstances where you can't get food. You know, a big storm or social unrest or something like that. 
Nice to have your own. We also know that growing plants is comforting and it's natural for us humans, especially during these times of turmoil. It's difficult for me to put a value on the self-confidence and the skills that I developed building this greenhouse, and I hope it helps you too. You can find my comprehensive video, Building a Geothermal Greenhouse in Your Own Backyard, The Full Guide and Tested Truth, at my website, ecoshock.org. That's E-C-O, shock like an electric shock, dot org. I'm Alex Smith, host of Radio EcoShock, as broadcast on 100 radio stations in the United States, Canada, the UK, and Australia. Thank you for listening, and thank you for caring about our world.